so uh, how many of you have heard of the industry uh, ship channeling anyone who have heard of this industry before so uh, okay there's one person there so i i i had no clue about this industry when uh, this project came and to be very honest i wouldn't have taken the project if i had known about the industry right uh, so uh, before we get into the point why uh, i'm sofan arud i'm founder at trix technologies and uh, already the previous speaker has uh, introduced that company um, we are 11 year old uh, tech firm so basically ship channeling is a very simple industry if you look at it it's a company or uh, organization that is responsible for giving everything that a ship needs right so that's the uh, requirement that came to me which i jumped on and afterwards the uh, uh, cloud starts to move right and suddenly you realize okay the, it has it is like the erp for everything because the ship channeler is responsible to bring the bmw spare parts he is responsible to bring the chemicals to textiles the uh, fnb supplies the meat vegetables so basically anything under the sun they handle so they are basically dealing with every supplier supplier in that city they are dealing with every logistics company in that city and they are dealing with every uom that you can imagine right so it's the erp of everything right so uh, the biggest challenge is it's again very very old so it has started during the maritime time onwards so century old industry they have their way of doing things and you are mostly dealing with highly experienced old people right who are very rigid like you give them a ui they'll take a print out and they'll use a pen to mark on this move this button here right so the biggest challenge is like the ships that comes to the port of india right would be coming from anywhere from the world right you will have ports uh, coming from places where they speak another language other culture for example uh, if you can think about middle east they have uh, a tabu towards pork the way you deal with those kind of food items will be different right now if you deal with some other place they might have some other cultural differences so you need to understand all these things and then you are also dealing with perishable items you are also dealing with all kind of you cannot mix chemicals you cannot put uh, unsafe things with food items so all these things have to be handled and finally you have to coordinate with the government the ports you have to coordinate with a lot of logistic providers you have to provide uh, for example the vegetable market they are not going to give you predefined uh, price list you cannot have a vendor contracting for vegetable right you have to go to the market right uh, so it's very very uh, complex situation in the industry and finally how it works right now uh, i have uh, seen real rfqs hand written on paper photographed on whatsapp and sent over to the company right and this will be like 20 25 images because as i said it's uh, the ship will send everything to these companies and it will have everything under the sun right there will be like harpic you will have spare parts you will chemical for cleaning and all these things and another one has to do with uh, word files i encountered word files that you cannot open because these are files that have been created in a very old version on a windows xp microsoft itself doesn't support that word format anymore and then you will have excel done by guys who have no other work they would have done a whole photoshop work inside excel you cannot parse it it will be designed there will be layouts right and finally some of them will send you jpeg some of them will send you pdf and some big organized companies will have their websites you are go and download it from their website and finally the another issue has to do with diverse regulations uh, i think we we went back right okay and now this is the biggest challenge that you uh, we did not realize right so to solve this problem they created a new problem they did something called a impa code it's a standardization where they try to standardize all the items in the uh, that usually de they deal with deal with and they try to put an impa code on that so you will have uh, 3 mm screw will have a impa code and 3.5 mm screw will have another impa code right so for example this is the actual clipping from an impa book so these are two nail cutters with different impa codes right and uh, the biggest problem is i i personally say nail cutter like uh, you guys say nail cutter or nail clipper nail cutter anyone nail clipper 
So there are countries that say nail clipper, right? And there are people in India who don't know what is a nail clipper, right? Now, we are just talking about something very basic. This changed drastically when you go to other items. And now there's another problem. Impact code has come, right? So people are so lazy, they'll use one impact code and then put all the other products under that. Now you have a problem. Do you trust the impact code? If you trust the impact code, your project will be re rejected from the ship, right? Because that's not what they want. That is another major issue that we faced. It's going one step back. Okay. So uh, this is what somewhat happens in our case right now. You get uh, the particular uh, RFQ from the client. And to give you a context, an RFQ might have around 2,000 items. So it won't be a small RFQ or anything, right? So right now it's being done manually, but you'll have like 2,000 items. Sometimes minimum might be around 200 items. So here you, you look at the impact code. If the impact code matches, you go with that, right? Or else you look at the customer item based on the history of the last purchase. Or else you go with the customer description. Or else you go with the item name. So you do all these things. And finally, if nothing matches, we treat it as a new item that we have not dealt with before. Right? And then someone has to manually interfere in that. So the uh, biggest thing was to try to club this issue. Like they are not ready to uh, come for the software. I'll give you a real example. There was a retired officer who was overseeing the whole operation. So I sat with him. I told him all the things. I tried to open my laptop. He, he did not let me. He just put his hand and put, put it down. He said, how much? Right? How much? Then I told him, like, it depends on the SRS. Now you tell me how much. Then he was saying, I get uh, college students on, uh, you know, part-time and they can do all these things. I don't need your software. Now I have to convince him first. Right? And the founder want me to convince him. Because founder don't want to take the risk of him leaving. And not having a software and him, right? Because he is the software now. What's happening? Yeah. So what we basically did was like we introduced uh, ERP Next. We brought in uh, CRM. We brought in Help Desk. And uh, we used something called PDF Miner. Uh, so uh, what we did to standardize was we convert everything to PDF first. Not a very optimal solution, but it works. So let it be a word file. So for people who know any version of word file can be converted to PDF without going through a, a word processing library. But if you have an older version of word, if you try to process it as a word file, you will get into trouble. Right? So uh, after that, we used basic LLMs uh, to uh, go through it and understand the impact code. So we are giving it with uh, impact code database to look at. And then we have a vision fallback. In case everything fail, we use vision. Vision accuracy is the lowest, but it works when the other accuracy is the lowest. It, it does a better job in that case. And we are doing good old SMTP fetching from their email account to get all the quotation prefetch to uh, the ERP next to start the process. I think we'll go to the video. I think I am holding this upside down. Yeah. No, no. Okay. <clears throat> so I was told this video will get a lot of negative reviews because he's talking about AI. <laughs> and So first, you get an RFQ in your email. Um, then the AI system inside the ERP, yeah, it reads the RFQ straight from the designated email automatically. Then it moves on, processing it with our uh, specialized AI system to really get a handle on the content of that RFQ. It's got this um, customizable setup that picks out things like the customer, the item, the required quantity, and you know other details from that RFQ. After that, you can use the easy-to-use UI in the system and add values, rates, etc. for items that was not detected uh, or are new. It is super easy and auto-suggests items, UMs, or categories based on our database. And yes, after this, you can um, move on to submit the quotation we have created. Uh, review it if needed within the system itself. Just like that. And yeah, 
then you can go ahead and download the quote as a PDF document or even sent it as an email directly from the system. Yeah, so uh, it's a very basic intervention for people who are in technology. It's a very small layer, right? I'm not going to demo anything else because it's just ERP next, the rest of it, right? It's CRM, ERP next, and all those things. Uh, but it was magical for them. Like, uh, how I actually converted them was using ChatGPT. I was sitting in the meeting and he said, no, there's no way you can read this document. So I had this ChatGPT plus with me. I had no plan to use vision model because I was damn sure about the PDF miner. I have done this before. But to convince him, I took a photo in ChatGPT and showed him the CSV directly that ChatGPT generated and that project was closed. But we did not use that as a, a library. And uh, I also make uh, one confession to make the AI in this video, right? This video was not made for this uh, event. It was meant as a marketing word. It was made for an AI conference. And that word was required to push this, right? It's not, uh, because if I have used ERP-based solution, it wouldn't sell, right? So I can cover it up, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and finally, uh, the biggest... Advantage, it's an ongoing project. We have just completed this part of it. There's a huge amount of problem to solve. Um, but uh, the biggest thing was like, it used to take two to three days to send a quotation because they had to go through their old Excel sheets. They had to, there were people who are new and who had no experience and there were people who can remember everything. So that was a major challenge. So uh, finally, most of the manual steps were eradicated. And suddenly there was visibility of what people are buying, why quotations are not going, right? The biggest problem is some of the ships are not uh, getting converted. So why is it not getting converted? What are the items that are not selling, right? What are the combinations? So all these things are now possible with uh, tools like insights and all this stuff. And finally, you can have customer specific thing. If you looked at the matchmaking, we have customer specific uh, matching where we look at the previous quotation that went through. So we know, okay, when they say nail clipper, they mean this, right? So these are things you can do once it's all in the system. That's all. If you have any questions, we can take it.